information process, storing and retrieving. Now we're going to take a look at storing and retrieving. And as you can see by the name, it's a twofold process. So let's firstly define what the two sides of this information process are. So we have the writing, the storing of data to a memory location within an information system. So actually storing the actual data somewhere within the system. And then we have the opposite, the obtaining retrieving of that same data at a later time for further use. So essentially, to put it in its most basic terms, when you click save, it sends your data to a location within the system. And then when you want to open that file once again, you have to retrieve that data from wherever it was saved uh, to and bring it back so you can continue working on it. So let's look at firstly methods of how we actually do storing and retrieving within an information system. Now, firstly is that example I just said, saving data. Okay, when you're actually working on data, that data is actually stored in RAM or the live data, everything you see on screen. Now, if the power source is pulled out of the system, that data will be lost forever because RAM is volatile memory. So when you click save, the data moves from RAM and goes into a location, most likely a hard disk drive or a solid state drive these days, located on your computer as the main secondary storage, okay, where data gets saved to. Okay, and so that's what we've got to understand. We've got primary storage, RAM, okay, and then secondary storage, our hard disk drives and solid state drives. Now, this obviously goes a bit deeper too and gets more complex, but we'll get through that, okay? Next, we'll look at backing up. Okay, now this is another level. Basically, it's when we save data to a location outside our system, or in this context, outside our information system. This is to protect the data in case anything happens to the information system. The computer blows up, the place has a fire, or a power surge destroys your motherboard and in turn destroys your hard drive. Okay, so backing up data then stores it to an external device such as a server, such as cloud storage, or such as another external hard drive, okay, where the data is separate and kept safe. Now, we save the data to that external device, okay, and then we've got this next method of recovering the files, okay, so now we bring the system back online, okay, we've lost all our data, we need to get this backed up data source and then recover the files and put them back on the system, okay, and we can have a lot of backup and recovery software that does this for us. On um, our Apple computers, we have a um, software known as Time Machine, which can do it for us and let's scroll to different versions, different historical versions of data to recover cover and a file if it's been corrupted or damaged. Okay, on Windows systems, we have Windows Backup and Restore, which does similar where we can actually set dates and different types of backups, which we can then call back to in order to recover files. Okay, so this is to protect our data in case things do happen to either the whole system or the actual files themselves. Okay, they become corrupt and then we can revert them back to a previous state so that we have the best version of the actual data we're working on. The other part of the uh, storing and retrieving is the directories and file structure. Now, if you've ever looked at the Windows Explorer when you actually are opening files or going through your folders, you know that you get the C dot dot slash and then obviously a file path after that. That is the directory structure. That actually says where the data is stored on your hard drive. Okay, the C dot dot slash means it's stored on the C drive, which is most likely your main hard drive or solid state drive. After that slash will be a folder name or a user account saying what part of the actual um, memory to go to first for the actual system when looking for this data. And then it will start going through all the folders followed by slashes, and then it will end with the actual file's name, which is where the file is specifically located. That pathway is known as the directory structure, okay? And that is similar across all systems. Now, directory structures aren't just for locally on your information system, but also is the basis of the internet as well, except we're accessing different servers. So finally, I'll just mention here for methods is storage mediums, okay? And these storage mediums are going to come up under our hardware, which is going to appear right now in our information technology section. So the storage mediums are hardware such as magnetic disk, your hard disk drive, or as we said with backing up, external disk drive, okay, which have a little magnetic disk on the inside, which is read by a needle, which rotates around and data is written to and recovered from when storing and retrieving. 
we also have optical discs, okay? These are our CDs, our DVDs, and Blu-ray, okay? Those shiny discs that um, if you've got a console that you put them into your system, okay, and allow you to play your games. Music was popularized through the CD. DVDs popularized the distribution of movies and video games. And obviously, Blu-ray is the highest level right now that can store up to 50 gigabytes of data. So have really large storage capacity for the distribution of multiple types of media, okay? So optical disc is still around, but it's slowly getting phased out by um, streamed services, okay? Because why need a disc at all when you can just stream it from online? Next, we have flash memory, which is becoming very popular these days. If I do stick to the talk about consoles, your Nintendo Switches use SD cards, okay? The big advantage of flash memory is there is no moving parts in order to read the data from. It's a chipset like your motherboard, okay? And once it connects, the data is easily read at a very high speed. But it's not just SD cards. It's also your USB flash drives, okay? When you plug them into the system. And as mentioned a few times in this video already, solid state drives, SSDs, okay? Which give us great speed. But obviously, when something gives us great speeds, high quality, means it costs more money. And that's what we've got to keep in mind if we're going to think about incorporating these into our information system. We have network storage. Okay, so using servers on a network where we can, uh, which basically compile our hard drives for us to save to, and then also cloud storage, storage locations accessed via the internet, which allow us to back our data up to online or work on our data in, ca in the case of things such as Google Drive. And then finally, we just have the traditional methods of storage, okay? And these two methods are kind of obsolete now, okay? We, uh, magnetic tape, okay, in the form of a VHS. That's how your parents used to watch movies. They'd put a VHS tape into a VHS player, and it would go through the actual movie in sequence, okay? And the same was similar to cassette tapes, which we use for music, okay? They'll put into the Walkmans or obviously the stereo sets that played cassettes, okay? And in order to view these actual data, it required what's known as sequential access and that the data was always viewed in a specific order. You'd press play and it would start winding in sequence. And if you wanted to go forward or backwards or to a specific piece of data, you'd have to fast forward and rewind. Okay, which was a very timely process. Also magnetic tape, okay, it got destroyed very easily. The tapes got chewed up and uh, destroyed very easily. It was very frustrating when that happened. But on the other side of it, it was very cheap. Okay, it's a cheap way of storing data too, which was to its own advantage. But magnetic tape is pretty much obsolete now and all the methods above have kind of replaced it. Okay, due to the, all those other methods having what's known as direct access, where you can just point and click on the data you want and it'll play it immediately. Finally, in this video, we'll have a quick look at software for storing and retrieving. So this includes things such as the file management uh, system, which is built into your operating system. The thing that actually allows for the directory locations to be created in hard drives when you create a new file, okay, and maps out the pathways for you. It also allows you to navigate this through a graphical user interface in order to open files stored in specific folders. We have database management systems, DBMSs, which are used as stated for the actual storing of data within a database and then searching through those databases to retrieve specific data. Okay? And as we've said previously, databases can store thousands upon thousands of records within them. So this software makes it a lot easier to retrieve that data from a database. Specific file formats, the fact that data gets stored in a certain file format means when we store it, it's stored in a certain way. Okay, and then when we open it, it opens with a specific piece of software. So when I open up a, a, a certain file that is .mp4, my system knows to open that file as a movie and it will use something such as QuickTime to open that movie automatically. So file formats have that actual effect on the actual file themselves. The file format you save an image in, okay, whether it's as a .bmp, which is a raw file format, meaning it's a large file, okay, will obviously have a large file size to it, but then once I change that file format to a .jpg or a .gif, it will convert it to a compressed file format, which greatly decreases the file size, okay? So file formats play a major role in the software selection that allows us to open the file, as well as compression that can be applied to it as well. Browsers allow us to, as mentioned with the internet, go through file directories stored on servers in order to access servers that are all over the world. Okay, whenever you type in a web address into a browser, it's obviously going to a stored network location and retrieves the data from that server so you can view the website. You're watching this video right now, which is stored on one of YouTube's servers. Okay, you have retrieved this data from YouTube server so you can watch this movie and greatly appreciate it too. Thank you very much. Okay, but the browser is at the center of this, allowing you to go to all these different servers in order to retrieve data from different websites. And then finally, with all of this is data security. 
we've got all these data stored on different systems, okay? And we're talking about information systems here. We've got to protect it because this data is often vital, not necessarily to yourself, but it could be to a business if you're running a business or if you're in a scenario such as a medical practice, you have a lot of private data stored about a lot of different people and you have the responsibility to keep that secure. So things such as antivirus software, firewalls, encryption, they all allow for data security of data stored within actual information systems. So I hope this video has given you a good introduction into the information process of storage and retrieving. Basically that storing is actually writing the data to secondary storage for it keep it on the information system for later use and then retrieving is calling upon that stored data and using it again later on from that saved location.